Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus. Now, in today's part 9, we will talk about the geometric interpretation for the gradient. However, before we start with that, as always, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, in the description of this video, you find a link where you can download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Now, from the last video, we already know that the gradient is defined for functions f from rn into r. However, there we also already know, for a good visualization, we can look at a function from r2 into r. Because in this case, we can draw the function in the domain by using contour lines. Of course, this can also be generalized to higher dimensions, but for us it's easier to visualize it in the plane. And then, by definition, such a contour line would consist of all the points in the domain that are mapped to the same value. So for example, we could just say f of x is equal to a constant c. Hence, for another constant, we would also have another contour line here. Okay, so this is the picture you already know for the visualization of the function f by using contour lines. However, now we will also look at another function gamma, which is given by a curve. It means there the domain is the real number line or an interval in the real number line. And then it maps into the domain of the function f, which means in this case into R2. Hence, this means now the image of gamma can also be visualized here in the plane. In fact, what we now want is that the image of gamma lies exactly on the contour line. In other words, the composition of both maps is a constant function. More precisely, f after gamma is always the value c. This holds no matter which point t from the domain of gamma we put in. So you see, with these assumptions we have a well-defined constant function. And please note, this is now an ordinary one-dimensional function from r into r. Hence, under the assumption that both functions here are totally differentiable, the new function here is also differentiable in the common sense. And then you should know from real analysis that the derivative of a constant function is just zero. And of course, there it does not matter which value c we have. So we always find that d dt of the function vanishes. Okay, and then we can do the same as in the last video, we can apply the multidimensional chain rule. This means we have a matrix product of two Jacobian matrices. So first we have the Jacobian matrix of f at the position gamma of t, times the Jacobian matrix of gamma at the position t. However, now we have learned in the last video that this Jacobian matrix here for f can be written as a gradient. So I remind you, the gradient is just the transpose of the Jacobian matrix. So we have the gradient of f at the position gamma of t. However, then we have to substitute this matrix product with the standard inner product. Moreover, the second Jacobian matrix can also be written shortly as gamma prime of t. Okay, and now we know from above, this is simply zero for all points t. However, now this means both vectors here in the inner product are orthogonal to each other. Now, in order to understand what this means, we have to look at the image of gamma again. Hence again, in the two-dimensional plane, it was given by such a curve. And then you should know, if you pick any point on this curve, the derivative of gamma, gamma prime, is tangential to the curve. Indeed, this immediately follows from how we define the derivative as a limit of a difference quotient. However, now the important point here is that we can conclude that the gradient of f is perpendicular to this tangential vector here. Indeed, this is a very important fact you definitely should remember. And here please recall, the curve gamma lies on a contour line of f. In other words, we can remember the fact that the gradient is perpendicular to the contour line. 
So you see, if you have a contour line, the gradient always points away from it. In fact, if you would follow the gradient, you would change the values of the function the most. Okay, about this we will talk later again. The important thing you should take here with you is that all these calculations, all these facts also hold in higher dimensions. Because also there it makes sense to look at a curve that lies in the set for the function where it is constant. And then the conclusion is the same, the gradient of f at this point is perpendicular to this tangential vector. Okay, so now after this important fact here, in the next video we will continue talking about changes of functions. More precisely, we want to say what happens when we go into other directions here in the domain. And indeed, this will lead to the notion of directional derivatives. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there in the next video. Have a nice day and bye!